From the Capitol, where the House passed the most comprehensive gun bill since the legislation passed after Sandy Hook in 2012. The package introduced by Governor Ned Lamont aims to stop the scourge of shootings, prevent gun accidents, and suicide. Lamont's House Bill 6667 passes the House. Welcome to another installment of the Connecticut Gun Bench. Today's video is brought to you by PAN Firearms, LLC. PAN Firearms, we NRA certification and multifaceted gun training. You can reach us at 203-300-6343 or use our website at www.panfirearmsllc.com. As always, there's a link in the description box below. And if you like my channel, like my content and what I am doing here, you can support me with the link in the description box. Everything is appreciated. And let's talk about this. And this comes as no surprise, really, because House Bill 6667, another one of these acts claiming to reduce gun violence, has passed through the House with obviously a majority. But unfortunately, yeah, this is what happens when you have a state with a one party rule for entirely too long. And, you know, f reality has been replaced with emotion and unfortunately we have to deal with it but you saw the little clip there in the beginning i don't really need to play any more of that clip because it's pretty much all laid out i want to jump right into here because obviously we got a lot to say about this before we begin obviously passing laws that restrict what the law abiding can do has nothing to do with anyone's safety, any the opportunity of somebody to be, you know, the victim of a crime or suicides. Like if guns, like guns are central to all these problems. It's absolute frigging nonsense. Once again, I have to censor myself. But let's go here. The Connecticut House passes expansive legislation to prevent gun violence. Because gun violence is the only thing we have to worry about. Damn. The Connecticut House passed an expansive legislative proposal on Thursday with provisions to help prevent gun violence in the state, according to officials, which it won't. It's not going to prevent anything. Violence will continue in general. And they're going to say, oh, we need to do more because that's what they do each and every time. Every time they pass a, a gun law, it does, it does nothing because it, it's not designed to do anything. Then they say we got to do more. But... Governor Ned Lamont introduced House Bill 6667, an act addressing gun violence earlier this year. The Connecticut House approved the bill with a bipartisan vote of 96 to 41. Now the bill will move forward to Connecticut Senate, where it will need to be approved before the governor can sign it into law. The legislation will aim to prevent gun violence, mass shootings, firearm accidents, and suicides, according to a release from Governor Ned Lamont. Boy, this dude lives in fantasy land. Quote, we need to do everything we can to keep our community safe and protect those who intend on doing harm for accessing deadly weapons, Governor Ledema said. The provisions included in this legislation are supported by an overwhelming majority of Connecticut residents, including many gun owners. Who? What gun owners? Nobody asked me about it. What gun owners? As a matter of fact, I spoke out against it. What gun owners is he referring to? Some Democrat who has a gun? Okay, what was the question asked? See, these people... Yeah, whatever. Because they want to limit a community that has common sense measures that encourage gun safety and prevent harm from impacting our neighborhoods and homes. Thank you for that political grandstanding gaslighting garbage. Because that's all it is. The following provisions are included in the legislative proposal. Open carry. The bill would ban open carry of firearms in public, but individuals with a gun permit could continue to conceal carry except in restricted locations. How's that going to prevent crime? How's it going to prevent gun violence? It doesn't. Criminals are not going to open carry a gun, but I don't want to sound logical. High risk repeat offenders, bail, probation, and parole responses would be increased for those with repeated firearms offenses, which is a lie, which is a lie. I did a story not too long ago about a man who got caught right here in Connecticut. He stole 50 guns out of a warehouse. He had prior felonies. 
50 guns disappeared. I think 17 were still on the street. If I'm not mistaken, 17 of those guns are still floating around on the streets that he sold to who knows, who knows. He got three years for that crime. So don't tell me you're going to start holding these people more accountable. But ghost guns. Oh, boy, here we go again. This bill will update the 2019 Ghost Go proposal to include the ban of ghost guns assembled before the bill's enactment. All ghost guns must be registered with the state by January 1st, 2024. Like somebody who's a criminal who built a ghost gun is really going to rush down to register their gun. Bulk purchasing. The legislation will prevent bulk purchasing of handguns from discouraging store purchases by barring the sale, delivery, or transfer of more than three handguns within a 30-day period. Or six handguns from a firearm instructor. Law enforcement agencies, returns and exchanges and transfers to a museum would be excluded from the bill. How about you include people who have, you know, wills who leave their guns to somebody who then has to transfer those guns to that person. But once again, hey, you know, you get tired of this crap. Safe storage. Legislation would expand current safe storage laws to apply, apply to all situations, not just those involving minors or prohibited part people who could potentially gain access to a firearm. Who gives a crap about that? Gun dealer accountability. The bill would increase accountability by permitting the Department of Emergency Services and Public Protection to issue a notice of violation barring sale for any dealer who violates their responsibilities. Once again, that's a very generalized language. Assault weapons ban. The proposed legislation will ban the loopholes in Connecticut's current law on assault weapons by adding firearms with banned features and guns left out of the 1994 pre-ban. New registration will open for 2023, assault weapons officials said. The weapons could be registered until May 1st, 2024, if the guns were purchased before the passage. If the firearms were already registered, the gun owners will, can continue possessing them, but any further transfer would most likely be barred. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God damn it. Large capacity magazine ban. The proposal will ensure enforceability for Connecticut's ban on large capacity magazines by making possession a Class D felony for prohibited people and a Class A misdemeanor for non-prohibited individuals. Underage gun purchase. If passed, the bill would expand Connecticut's existing prohibition on the retail sale of semi-automatic firearms, rifles with a capacity greater than five rounds to anyone under 21, including private sales. Pistol permit training. The bill would update the training requirements needed for pistol permits as well as the eligibility certificates to ins require instruction on the lawful use of firearms, storage safety, and state firearm laws. What the hell does that mean? Trigger locks. The law will require all firearms be sold with trigger locks. They already do. Domestic violence. The bill will make the commission of a family violence crime or federal vi domestic violence misdemeanor an automatic disqualifier for a pistol permit. It will include the commission of the crime after October 1st, 2023 as a qualifier for criminal possession of a firearm. Wow. Transport. The bill would make it so all long guns, including ones categorized as other, must be unloaded while they are carried in a vehicle. Body armor. Legislation will require anyone purchasing body armor to possess a pistol permit or eligibility certificate. Specific law enforcement, state, judicial, and military officials will be exempt. Permitting of timelines. The bill would create a timeline for local law enforcement agencies can act during the first part of the pistol permit process. What that basically means is once you pass a class, you're going to have X amount of time, whatever that may be, to actually use it to, to apply for a permit. You technically... It's CGS 2928, where they said that a, a, the certification class was good forever. Now they're trying to put a time limit on it. All right, let's come out of that. None of this is going to prevent gun violence. None of this is going to prevent suicide. None of this is going to prevent safe handling or storage or any damn thing else. But it's not about that. It's just another law to put on top of other laws that when they don't produce the results they claim they're going to do, they're going to stand around, and make a big deal about it and say, we need to do more, which means more gun laws. That's what this is all about. This ain't protecting nobody. It's not protecting a soul. Because the only people who are going to follow are those willing to follow it. And this whole thing with the training requirements, this is an insult to all the NRA instructors, because that's basically what they're trying to do. They're trying to 
not so much push out, but phase out the NRA certification as training. No more extra time on your, on your initial class is going to make you a better shot or a safer person or know the laws any better. Anyone who's shot guns over a long time knows that it's time and experience that makes you a better shooter. Time and experience. You can give 10 more hours of shooting for a person to go through their initial class. It's not going to improve their abilities. It takes time. This right here is just to make the process longer and more expensive so more people won't do it. That's what this is all about and it's an insult to me as an NRA instructor, as a small business owner, as a small minority business owner that I'm being pushed out like this with this nonsense. You can go to my Facebook page and look at all of my reviews. Not one is below five stars. Why? Because I'm thorough in what I do and I don't need the state to tell me how to do it. I know how to do it. I had 20 years doing this. This is garbage. This once again is Lamont pushing draconian ideals that have nothing to do with the underlying problem of violence. Because as he's sitting around gaslighting about gun violence, this happened. So this morning, there will be a heightened police presence at Tuttle Elementary School after a scary situation sent one boy to Yale Hospital. Now, we're told an altercation between terrible kids led to an attack. Let's get right out to Channel 3. I've been news reporter Marcy Jones, who is live now in East Haven. Marcy, you're getting some new information we heard from neighbors this morning. What can you tell us? That's right. Good morning. Well, I just spoke to a resident who said, unfortunately, he's not surprised by this information for weeks now. He says there's been a group of youths who have been essentially causing disturbances and established a pretty intimidating presence around the neighborhood, having fights and just really kind of causing a ruckus. He actually said that they were told by police via text message to contact them immediately when they spot these teens causing trouble. According to East Haven Police, just before 630, two Tuesday night, officers responded to a courtyard of Tuttle Elementary School for a report of a fight. When they arrived, officers determined that a youth was assaulted with a knife during a physical altercation. First responders treated the boy on scene and shortly after he was taken to Yale New Haven Hospital for further medical treatment. Don't tell me this is about protecting people's lives because it's not. This is about putting restrictions on top of restrictions on people who have done nothing wrong. He is making the citizenry accountable for criminal behavior. But this is going to the Senate. And unfortunately, like I said, this is what you, the problems you have when you have a one party rule that's had party rule for too long. And people keep, you know, basically boosting their egos by keep reelecting these same people who do the same things over and over again and get no results. But this is what we end up with. Okay, so it says going to the Senate, you can write your representatives, you're gonna get back the same BS form letter responses, how they talk about this is about safety when it's a bunch of garbage. It is not about your safety. If they really were gonna be about your safety, just remember, these same Democrats who are pushing this stuff through are the same ones who voted against actually holding criminals accountable and youthful offenders accountable for what they do. These are the same people. So don't let them tell you this is about your safety. They let the criminals run the streets and they hold the public accountable for what they do. But let me know what you think. As always, you can leave your comments in the comment section below. And as always, any statements of violence or statements that lead to violence will be removed. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you're notified the next time a video goes live. I will see you on the next one. Peace.